Welcome back. And in lesson 36, we're doing some real world problems. We're comparing rates in real life. So you're going to see how you can use this skill when you go out shopping for just about anything. And it'll teach you how to compare and figure out what's the better buy. And so Mac Marbles, let's go through this first problem and we're going to discuss what this looks like. And I guarantee this is a skill you can use when you go out shopping with your family. Let's look at this problem. Mark was at the store and was comparing different size bags of Hershey Kisses. There's a 40 ounce bag for $4.80 and there's a 56 ounce bag for $5.60. What is the unit rate for both bags? Which is the better buy? Explain your reasoning. So they're asking pretty much, if I'm asking what's the better buy, I wanna know which has the lower price per ounce. That's what I'm looking for. How am I getting the most chocolate for the least amount of price? There you go. Let's look at our information. We know that one pack is 40 ounces of chocolate for $4.80. And our second pack, 56 ounces of chocolate for $5.60. And here's our plan. First, I'm going to use math to organize both situations. That's how I'm going to find unit rate. Then I'm going to cross multiply to set up equations for both situations. And then I'm going to use algebra to calculate the unknown. The unknown we're looking for again, math marbles is unit rate. We want to make sure we know what the unit rate is for every ounce of chocolate. And that will help us identify which is the better buy. Which ever one has the lower cost per ounce. So hit pause so you can jot down this plan into your class notes. Let's put this plan into action. I have bag A and bag B ready and we're trying to figure out the lowest price per ounce. That's what we want, the lowest price per ounce. So notice that's how I have my units, prices, and then ounces. So I'm going to put in my information for what I'm calling bag A, which is just the first one, which is 480 for 40 ounces. Bag B is 560 for 56 ounces. And we want to figure out what is the price per ounce. So when there is one ounce, and this is the number we're trying to figure out. All right, we're going to do our usual cross product so i'm going to cross multiply and when we multiply in this direction we get 40 times a number and because it's unit rate we already know it's 480 times one which is just 480. we have four dollars and eighty cents is equal to 40 times a number we're going to rewrite this into four dollars and eighty cents divided by 40 is equal to that number. So that's our, our number sentence that we can figure out. That's why we rewrite it into the vision map marbles. So let's use our long division for this. Here's $4.80. Here's 40. Remember I have a decimal inside my, my little house. So we're gonna boop, pop it up into my quotient. So they're lined up. And we have three digits. One, two, three in here. So we're going to make sure we have three digits, like three little hats on top in my quotient. All right. So we know that 40 cannot go into four, but 40 does go into 48 one time. And 40 goes into 80 two times. And so we have our unit rate for the first packet. It is 12 cents per ounce. That's all we did for the first one. We used math and we figured out it is only 12 cents for every single ounce in that bag. So we're going to do the same thing with the next one. We're going to cross multiply again. And so here we have 56 times a number and we have $5.60. So let's write down this equation. $5.60 is equal to 56 times that number. Let's rewrite that to division. $5.60 divided by 56 will give us that number. Now, this is something we can solve. It can be a challenge. That's okay. Challenges aren't impossible. 
we already know what to do with the decimal and we already know 56 cannot go into 5 but it does go into 56 one time and that's zero and so we're also going to put that other digit in there so there we go we have 10 cents per ounce all right so math marble which would you rather pay if i'm looking for the better buy and this is what the situation is asking which is the better buy which is which has the lowest price per ounce it is absolutely going to be the bag b and why? Because I'm only paying 10 cents per ounce. Now you may be saying, but miss, aren't we paying more? We're paying $5.60. Isn't that more than $4.80? Yes, it is. It is more. But I am getting more chocolate for less money. That is why it is a better buy. So I'm going to put this into the notes. The better buy... The $5.60 bag because we pay 10 cents per ounce instead of 12 cents per ounce with the $4.80 bag. And that's the key, Math Marbles. We want to know where are we spending more money. We're getting more chocolate for less money. That is the goal. This is more chocolate for less per so hit pause so you can put all of this into your notes. And I want to give you a bonus because we use math for all this, but I can actually show you how to do this one more way. So I'm going to go to one more slide. So I'm just going to use this back A for an example where we did all this math to figure it out. And we have the sentence here. There is another way we can find the unit rate without using math. And some people might be ready for it. So here it goes. I'm going to write the rate that we have here. So I have 480 over 40 because this is the price per ounce. What other operation do you see here, Math Marbles? Look at it for a second. 480, when I write something in fractional form with a fraction bar, what operation is that? Well, this also represents division. So I can rewrite this problem as 480 divided by 40. And math marbles, this is the same as what we were doing when we were using math. When we did math, we were cross multiplying and we were getting an equation. And it was always this number, whatever this was, times a number. And this was always whatever this was times one. Every time we did unit rate, it was always this times one. And so we always ended up with a sentence that looked like this, 480 divided by 40, which is the same expression we can get if we had just started with the unit rate. So this is just another way that you can find unit rate in one step. If you do not feel comfortable with it and you would rather use math because it makes more sense to you, stay with math. Stick with it. If you think you're ready to do this in one step, then you can go into this one step. The only thing you have to remember is what is the rate you are expressing. If you want to find the price per ounce, then your rate has to be price over ounces. Many kids mess up by putting, they sometimes flip it around and you put the ounces on top and the price on the bottom. And that is where you would get a very different answer. So some kids do this to find unit price. Ounces over money. So you really have to be careful. Say the rate to yourself. So here's my tip. Say the rate to yourself. That way you are writing it in the correct order when you want the unit 
great. And you can find it in one stop. But again, if you feel more comfortable with math, use the math. That's it for today, Math Marbles. You're going to have more real life examples comparing unit rates. Again, you can use this in real life when you go shopping. When you have two different sized items, you can figure out which one am I paying less for. And especially if you go to places like Costco where they have big items, you can figure out, well, what is the rate? How much am I paying for every ounce of that soda or every ounce of that popcorn? Well, I'm going to stop there. I will see you in the next lesson, Math Marbles. Take care.